Here's the punter Bradley Pinion on to get us started. And we are underway from MetLife Stadium. Reed going to bring it out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by the former UConn and Eastern Kentucky quarterback. It's Tim Boyle. And when you watch him play, everything just looks like it comes so naturally to him. When he's dialed in and finds that zone, passes are crisp. He sees the field really well, and he takes charge as the leader of this offense. Oh, did the Jets miss this guy? Here's Brees Hall. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Now a second and two. On second down, a run with Hall. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. So just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. They'll run with Hall. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted, lined up. Let's get some points on the board, and they're able to avoid that three and out. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Now a late signee let go by Minnesota in June. It's Dalvin Cook. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. Second down and three. Here's Boyle. Wilson's got it complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 38-yard line. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. we got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. And this is exactly the kind of drive you're hoping for out of the gates. They're mixing the run and the pass well, keeping this defense off balance early. And they're on the march here with another first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Throwing now, Boyle. And he completes it to Wilson. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Now Boyle to throw. Throwing for the out route, he finds Wilson. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. 
But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Zerline's kick is up and through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. And all in all, a pretty decent opening drive, Charles. Pretty balanced. They had the passing game going and the rushing attack, too. I would think they have to be happy with that start because you get your ground game going, which means your offensive line and your runners are pretty happy. And then you get your aerial attack going as well. So your quarterback and receivers have smiles on their faces. Now both up to speed, awaiting their next possessions for this game. They can't wait to get started again. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they'll be led out by a much-discussed third-rounder in last year's draft. The second-year pro out of Cincinnati, Desmond Ritter. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by her. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 41 yards. Well, make that now two completions for him on this drive. And these aren't ordinary completions. They're big ones. Yeah, these are the types that make a secondary talk to each other and not in a good way. Oftentimes pointing fingers. Hey, who's got him? Someone cover him. That type of indecision can open up to even more big plays. So after the big play, look at this. All the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. Now the first running back taken back in April, the former Longhorn, B. John Robinson. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly, and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play, as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Ritter throwing on third down. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Ah, oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here. Give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Algier. Touchdown, Falcons. So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both done on this drive. Extra point attempt to follow here. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good.
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now from MetLife Stadium. The Jets with the football here as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. Boyle. Wilson's got it on the crossing route. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action, now Boyle. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Back to throw is Boyle. And yeah, this one's going to sail on him a bit, and it's incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way, a dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Off the play fake, it's Boyle. Flush to his right, and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Taken in at the 22. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And it will be Falcon football. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. Off to play fake, it's Ritter. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Ritter from the gun. This is caught by Robinson. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. On third down, Robinson, and he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. 
And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. From the 43, here's a second and nine. Robinson with another carry. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 15 yards, first down Atlanta. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Ritter now looking to throw it this time. Short throw caught by Pitts. They'll wind up getting just a yard at its second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. Second down and a run by Robinson. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. The Ritter back to throw. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. And the Jets' defense making things difficult there. Fourth down. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense, and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. New York ready to go again offensively. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Here's a second and five. To throw is Boyle. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. Throwing here, Boyle. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Second and 10. To throw again, Boyle. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Normally, you think the tight end is going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. The Jets on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. completion here as they fail to connect on third. Well, if nothing else, they were able to pick up one first down on this drive and get it away from their own goal line, but not much happening after that, and it leads to a punting situation. Now the veteran Thomas Morstead on to punt it away. That's taken at around the 40. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And they will take over first and 10. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. 
As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Second down throw coming for Ritter. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Drake London, his intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Ritter. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Ritter looking to throw on first and 10. Incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. Here's second and 10. Looking to throw once more. Here's Ritter. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Here's Ritter. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. much too long that's into the end zone for a touchback New York's offense back out there and set to go it was still more than a minute to go in the half time to try to mount a drive and I would think that they would have to this is today's NFL you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity you could never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face and analytics will tell you try and score when given the opportunity and he'll go down at the 26 following a gain of six the Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Looking to throw. Boyle. And Lazard's got it again. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. On first and ten, it's Boyle. And that's going to be incomplete. Easy to tell who they're targeting on this drive. He caught the first two passes, but then this time unable to hook up. But I don't think that that stops them from continuing to go back to him, do you? No. I mean, they've got a, they've got a plan. They're trying to execute it. And after that second catch, I saw him in the huddle. He said, hey, let's go back one <laughs> more time. Didn't work there. 
Again, he'll drop to throw. Open man here is Conklin. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. They give him a gain of 38. Real far, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Here's Boyle. Trying to get it to Cobb, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Falcon defense has a touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Coup for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw. Boyle. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end, complete. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A happy sight for a lot of these fans. We're jumping right over halftime and getting back into the action. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. 
From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It's a gain of 16. First down, Falcons. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Ritter on first and 10. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. On second down, another shot for Robinson. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Ritter to throw it. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, Look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. On first down, Boyle. This one finds Wilson downfield. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Boyle. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. On first and 10, it's Hall. They juked him. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. This defense might want to wake up on this drive and stop them before that first down marker. Unfortunately, it's easy to grade the defense right now. Not good. Three plays, three first downs. They've got to come up with something to slow them down. On first down, right back to Hall. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything, change it up, because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Now Boyle to throw. 
And that is incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. On fourth down, Boyle. That is caught. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. Give them credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. So they get the conversion on fourth, and now from the 25, they operate with a first and 10. Throwing now, Boyle. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Straight ahead is Hall. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw is Boyle. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. On first down, Boyle, and a completion to Wilson. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Looking to throw, Boyle. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Tim Boyle taking it in from seven yards away. And the Jets go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to have great vision, and you've got to remain calm when things break down in the pocket. Both of those traits were on display there. He surveys the situation, sees the middle of the field open, so he's just going to step up and take it himself. Very well done there. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock. And this is second and less than a yard. 
They'll run again here with Robinson. They'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 73 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Ritter will set up to throw it. Throw out wide is incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of momentum. The other side is starting to gain. This offense so far on third down, they've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. Ritter now. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 27-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Off the play fake, it's Ritter. Short throw to Smith. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the 21, here's second and four. Robinson up the middle. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Looking to throw it here, Ritter. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Desmond Ritter, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons will add to their fourth quarter lead. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Footing always a concern, but the extra point's up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Jets offense now works their way back onto the field. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. To throw is Boyle. 
A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So from the 37, here's second and two. Throwing here, Boyle. Caught by Cobb. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. They'll look to throw again. And that one too wide. And incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game. And there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is going to be recovered by a member of the offense, but whistles come in. Remember, on fourth down, that becomes a dead ball if anyone other than the fumbler himself recovers. So it'll come back to the spot of the fumble, and that will mean that's going to wind up being a turnover on downs. The Falcons' offense set to go. Well, they can thank their defense for another stop. And now look at the score, where they've got the football. They're looking pretty good. They're looking excellent because now you're thinking to yourself, let's just take some time off the clock, work it down. And of course, you put another touchdown on the board, you can pretty much say bye-bye to this one. Play calling here can be a little bit more conservative because of the lead. A little bit more conservative. The biggest thing, everyone understands how to get the ball downfield and how to stay in bounds and make sure the clock keeps running. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Ritter back to throw. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as he'll take this down to the 26. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Hand off now to Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. A loss of one, now a loss of two, and they're staring at a third and 13. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Again, it's Robinson. And he does not get to the first down marker as they stop him at the 19. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. They got to walk that walk. 
So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. It'll be from the right hash and it'll be a 36 yarder. Kuhn knocks this one through the post and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Reed going to bring it out of the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So the Jets now down by 13. A minute 50 to play. Field goals useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Off the play fake, it's Boyle. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. Another try, second and ten now. Here's Boyle. That's caught by Wilson, and he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. A two timeouts still remaining, but scoring quickly, a must. It's first and 10. Boyle's throw into the hands of Cobb. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Here's first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and 10. Back to throw again. He'll find Lazard here over the middle. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. But just a gigantic play here, both sides. This is third and inches. Operating from the gun. Boyle. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Here it is. Fourth and inches. They'll go for it. It's Hall. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Fourth and inches in plus territory, that seemed like a prime spot to go for it. It certainly did, and there's so many things that go into it. Are you too far away for a field goal, but not far away to punt it? Do you just feel like your offense is better? I just think in today's NFL, offense feels like it has to take care of the football, has to keep the ball because scoring is up you better maximize every possession. You trust your offense more than you trust your defense in today's league. This is first and 10. Operating from the gun, Boyle. Pressure brought in and the Falcons get there for the sack. It'll be a loss of 10 and it'll bring up second. 
So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from MetLife Stadium.